This video is brought to you by SailRite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to install Lazy Jack slits in your sail cover. This is a throated sail cover, and we've installed Lazy Jack slits to obviously accommodate Lazy Jack lines. Here it is with the Lazy Jack slits on both sides of the sail cover. Let's get started and show you how to do this. If this is a new sail cover, you'll install the slits for the Lazy Jack after the hem on the bottom portion of the sail cover is done. Then you'll complete the rest of the sail cover after the slits are finished. You'll need to determine the Lazy Jack location on your sail cover and then use a hot knife to cut slits approximately two thirds of the way up from the cover edge. You'll need to then install a four inch slit perpendicular to the first slit and equally spaced on each side of the slits. This is a list of materials required to install each Lazy Jack slit on one side of the sail cover, so you may want to pause the video here and study this list. Okay, we've got our slits made here for our Lazy Jacks, one in the rear and one in the front. This sail cover only accommodates two Lazy Jack slits on each side. Okay, Yours may have more. Here. We're going to have it opening to the back of the cover. So when we lock, put our locks in, we've got to put a reinforcement so that we have another thickness for the lock section here and for the door to come over on. So we want to start out with measuring, and you want to measure just up to the slit, and we're going to have at least 20 inches. And then we're going to be coming around here with a leather patch or any kind of chafing or anything that might happen. We're gonna go ahead and go a couple inches, inch and a half above, inch and a half over, and then maybe an inch out in here. And we'll be cutting out a leather patch with this. First we want to cover up these raw edges here that are just hot knifed. For each of the Lazy Jack slits, you'll need a closure flap, you'll need two leather patches, you'll need a binding edge, and you'll need a reinforcement patch, cut out as you see here in the video. Put a wider one here, and I figure if we have about two and a half inches on this piece, say five inches on here, we'll be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew this on this edge and then we're going to bring it around to the inside. That will give us two thicknesses of umbrella for our lock system. And this will just simply cover the other edge, finish it off like a binding type. You could use pre-made binding so here if you'd like instead. There. So you put those on first and we'll finish those off. And then the leather will take care of the top edge that's not finished. But we want to put just a small, maybe eighth to a quarter of an inch hem on the bottom so that when, after we get done wrapping it, we don't have any raw edge at the bottom of the cover. So we'll just take and put a very small finished edge on the bottom. We're using the Sayerite Big and Tall Sewing Machine. However, a home sewing machine can do this job pretty easily. We're also using Tanara Thread. A V69 or V92 polyester thread will work just as well. And here you can see Deb is just creating a hem and then sewing a stitch along the edge to hold the hem in place and reverses the sewing machine at the beginning and the end to lock the stitch in place. The sail cover is laying on the table so the outside surface is and facing up. We have our finished edge here against the finished edge from the double hem. And then we'll take that up that side. That's the reinforcing patch. Now we're going to turn our attention to the binding edge. This, this is one. what's going to create the binding for the opposite okay. edge. So you want your hemmed raw edge up. We'll sew those just right straight up to this edge and sew it off. And if it's a little bit short it won't matter because that's all going to get covered up with leather like I said earlier. Well, you want to make sure that your raw edge is up so that after you sew it down and turn it, then you've got all a nice finished edge here at the bottom. You go ahead and base those on if you want, right at the edge, just to hold them in place. Deb's using seam stick part number 129 here to help hold the panel or the binding edge in place, and she'll also use that for the reinforcement patch on the opposite side. A lot of side. these umbrellas don't have uh, matching 
binding. So a lot of these binding edges is uh, going to be matched with a smaller piece. Or you could use a contrasting binding if you'd rather do it that way. You could just use prefabricated binding up to that for this and slit. This way will leave the slit uh, lay a little bit flatter than binding the whole edge up and having a collar type stand up. So we're just if you choose to use prefabricated binding and run the binding up the side and also around the slit opening, the four inch slit opening at the top, it has a tendency to bubble it or to cause it to stand up unnaturally. So we're doing it completely different here and this technique will prevent that from happening. The sail cover is facing so the outside surface is facing up. We're sewing on the binding edge taped here and we're putting that stitch a half inch away from the raw edge and we're using that magnetic guide to keep it a half inch from the raw edge. Be sure to reverse the beginning and end of your stitch. inside of it okay and we're gonna just take this and fold it to so that both raw edges are facing each other and then you just take and fold it one more time and we're gonna sit right down that edge and you, again you can base this if you want to we're just finishing this edge off, clear down to the double hem at the bottom. And just simply fold it to the raw edge. And again, fold it right over the raw edge. It's kind of like a homemade binding type. Okay, now you see we have a finished edge on the outside and on the inside from folding it in. So that edge is all finished off. And then this edge has got the bigger flap. And we want to take this so, because this edge is going to be folded inside like this. But we want to put a finished edge on it before we apply it to here. So you want to take is laying on here, you want to take the opposite edge, you're going to be sewing down and hem that. Because we're going to be sewing this edge to the cover for reinforcements once we get done. And again, you can just use a small seam or a small hem here, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Go down the edge of it long edge. Now this is probably as good a time as any to discuss the different threads. As I said earlier, we're using Tanara thread, which is totally UV proof. Polyester thread is not UV proof, but UV resistant. And typically in the tropics, it'll last two to three years. In the Midwest, okay, so it'll last probably 10 years or more. Two finished edges. We're gonna tape onto here. You can start it at the bottom so that it's even at the bottom and work your way up because again the top is going to be covered with leather so if you're a little short there it's not going to matter. But you want to make sure that you don't go over the horizontal slit. Okay so we're going to do the same thing and do a half inch seam on the edge of that. The hems on the reinforcement patch are facing up and the cover is facing so the outside surface is up as well. Okay, now we're back with the slit opening here. We're going to do the same with that and just kind of press it down. And when you fold it, you don't want to fold this in. You want to fold your flap over top of You want to keep this seam going toward your small piece and go over top holding your seam out. That way when it's all finished, both edges will still come together, otherwise you're going to get a gap down through. Okay, so we'll have like a half inch 
markers that was showing on the front. And again, you can use basting tape to hold this in place if you want. And then we'll flip it over. And you'll see we're down against the hem on the inside. Now if you take this here, you can put basting tape underneath here. Fold the small piece over the seam. Okay, and we're bringing it over the seam. And your finished edge is facing down. We're just going to stitch it down along the, inner, the edge toward the split just to make sure that we can hold this reinforcement piece in place with the stitch here. And have it lay nice and flat. When that's done, we'll sew the opposite side to that cover as well. Please note that the uh, sail cover is facing so the inside is up now. So the reinforcement patch gets sewn to the inside of the cover. And again, you can pin it or base it down to hold it in place because you don't want it to be pulled or puckered. Back to the top. Back over here. You'll see we have what looks to be two binded edges that are finished here now at our slit. Okay. You open it up, you'll see that we have a nice binded edge on this one. And a reinforcement piece comes in a little bit further. And that's going to hold our lock system. We'll show you as we go on here. Now we're going to apply the leather at the top, and I've just kind of rounded the top corners off of mine because it's a little bit easier to keep sewing and you don't have to put any corners that are going to be pulling. And then I baste it also, and then just kind of hold it with the, and kind of fold it in half toward itself with the basting tape out just kind of position it over the center of the slit that you can see here. You want it to be at least an inch or so past that slit so that you're cutting it, or so you're covering it up, I'm sorry. Okay, and then we'll just stick that down, like so. Deb's using a much thicker leather, a four to five ounce leather. We recommend using the two to three ounce leather. Okay, and you can't see your horizontal slit right now. So what you want to do is just clip up in here just a little bit. The leather. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and then we'll be able to see where our slit is at. The inside edge. So we can just finish our slit going up here. that one positioned underneath. Another piece of leather on the inside of the slit and do the same thing with it. You want to just kind of position it over and you can kind of feel where the leather edge is. It doesn't have to be perfect, you just want to be able to catch the same stitches from the front going onto the back. You'll notice that this leather is not trimmed at the corners, but that's because this is the inside okay, of the cover, and the appearance is not as important. And with the front cut open, we can see now where to slit the back. So, cut up the leather into the back. And cut your horizontal.
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and stitch above and below our slit line here. And again, be sure to back stitch. To sew this leather patch in place, we're going to sew around the external portion of the leather patch. We're going to sew along the uh, parallel slit and the vertical slit. So there's a lot of sewing that takes place here, but it's necessary. Okay, we're going to get above it and we're going to get below it. You'll see that Deb reverses the stitch at every beginning point and end point to lock the stitch in place. Okay, make sure and back stitch here. And you can just kind of jump to the next side. You can cut, clip that stitch as long as we're back stitching at this point. It won't come unravel. And back stitch again. Okay, then we're going to come around the top, starting on the, on the side. If your sewing machine struggles with sewing through the two layers of leather, you may have to uh, hand stitch each one of these leather patches in place. Typically, most uh, heavy duty sewing machines can handle this fairly easily. Now, Deb is using a very heavy leather here. This is a 4 to 5 ounce leather. We recommend using the 2 to 3 ounce leather because it's just a little bit easier to sew through and still provides plenty of protection. You'll notice at the corners that sometimes Deb will bury the needle and pivot on the needle by lifting the foot and rotating the fabric. You want to bury the needle to the thickest part of the shaft to avoid needle deflection issues. bottom edge here. So we want to back stitch again on this corner. And you can come up here and back stitch. And turn it this time and you stitch the very edge. This leather patch will provide plenty of protection for the Lazy Jack lines to run through. It will keep it from abrading against the canvas, which has a tendency to abrade, while the leather does not. In lieu of using leather, you could use binding around the slip, but it doesn't lay as nice. This actually lays beautifully. So this is the method that Sayerite highly recommends. And here it is, done. Stitch across and just that. You have your opening. And now we're going to make our flap. It's going to sew on here, flip over to this edge. Okay, I'm going to make a two and a half inch line. This line here. is two and a half inches from the bottom of this panel. Because that's how wide uh, we have. Make our sail covers at the bottom for our locks. That way, when we do a stitch at the top, stitch at the bottom, we still have room for the lock to fit in there. So, we're going to be putting one of those on the bottom, and we're also going to be putting one up the side because we'll have locks on the side of this flap to close the slit opening, which will come even there. And again, you'll have you will. Uh, Take this into consideration that it's going to be folded this way, double count, okay? And then we're going to put just a single fold over hem on this edge where it's going to be sewn down to the cover. And then we'll have a double hem at the bottom. And we'll also have a double hem coming up the side to hold our lock to here. Okay, we want a single hem at the top, which that only needs to be maybe a half inch fold over. And I use this because it's a, a half inch already, so I like to use that because it's a sure thing for a half inch. And then we'll put another line. Okay, we're going to double this half inch, so we want to fold it to the one inch line and then fold it over again 
and that is the top of the flap. The flap That's the, the top of the uh, closure flap. And again, you can use basting tape if you need to on that. Deb refers a lot to the basting tape, but you also notice that she doesn't always use it. Uh, that's because she has a lot of experience. Basting tape can definitely take some of the inexperience out of if you've never done this before because it helps to hold things in place bottom, while you sew them. The double, wider hem for the lock. Coming up next, we're going to lay this closure flap on top of the sail cover. Take note of the hems. The hems are facing down and the sail cover is facing up, so the outside okay. surface is up. So we're going to need our double hem on this edge. We want to be sure and bring that over. And then again, like I had said before, I make a two and a half inch double hem so that the lock, when the holes are punched, the legs and the hole won't cut through the stitches. You can make yours an inch wide just so that it can consume the lock without problems. Deb likes to be sure that the uh, fastener so doesn't cut through the stitches. Here. If it does cut through the stitches, it still won't cause any problems. She's just very picky, which is good. On that long edge, she measures over so two and a half inches. The line again, just like we did the bottom hem. And then over again. And then that will come down lock to lock. Okay. Now the opposite edge, we do want to fold that over. Just a uh, single hem because we're going to be stitching it down to the cover here. It doesn't need to be double because it, you're not going to see the inside edge of it. So what I do just mark me a one inch line. And then we'll just fold it to the one inch line on that one. Back stitches. And again, you can base this if you want. Pin it, whatever you need to. Pull that down. this two line and again you don't need a double hem here because we're going to stitch this to the cover. Okay we have our two double hems our single doubled over him. Our half inch I'm going to have single on this edge. Okay, so we're gonna lay this to here, right to the bottom of our slit, which will be even here. And we can also take our marking pencil, put it together. And I like to take just make a little bit of a mark. Edge. It's gonna go. Okay, and we're just gonna seam this edge up here, and then we'll have our flap finished and our slit finished off, ready for locks. All right, we'll sew right along that line or on top of that line, reversing at the beginning and the end, and then we're ready to install our twist lock fasteners.
walking over all this leather and canvas can be difficult. You may have to hand sew that section. Now we're going to install a lock at the top, lock at the bottom, and one right in the center. And also on a shorter flap, such as this, this is about 20 inches. Anything over that you would want to do more, but uh, uh, I would say up to 20 inches as long as you have an anchor on both corners and a lock right in the center, you should be good enough. Now anything higher than that, I might go ahead and put two locks in the center of. Okay, we're gonna put locks. And when we put the locks in here, we run them sideways this way, going up the side of the flap here. We're gonna go ahead and just run them this way. So we know that we're gonna want one in the corner. Using the rubber cutting block, we obviously avoid damaging the fabric that we don't want to hold it okay, be punctured so. through. We'll be using the Common Sense Eyelet Hole Cutter here to install the four slits for the legs and the center oval for the actual fastener. You could use a razor blade or a hole punch to create the center hole. This tool obviously does it a lot faster. There's a lot of thickness here in this cloth assembly. It may be required that prior to your sewing you cut out some of the thickness okay. here in order for the fastener and your sewing machine to handle the thickness. For this corner, we're using a common okay, sense so fastener eyelet for thick that. assemblies. Better it has more back. potential to go through thicker fabrics of up to six to eight layers of canvas. So at this location, the legs or prongs are a little bit uh, longer, and that gives us the ability to get through all of this multiple layers of canvas. And then it's just a matter of bending each one of those legs down, and you can use any tool to do that. Okay, we're going to take our lock and put it in, and then we're going to lock it. Make sure that our cover's laying flat. Place. The holes. And then you want to be sure, like I said, that it's laying flat when we mark these. Okay. We'll use a rubber cutting block to prevent damage to the tool and use a 1 8 inch hole cutter here to place holes for that twist slot portion or stud. That. We're using the common sense the stud with the two button base. We place the button in the oval portion of the tool, then we use the top portion of the tool and give it a few blows with the hammer to roll the barrel portion of the snap over the top of the twist lock fastener stud base. For your information, since our fabric is so thick here, we're using the double height two screw stud. This uh, double height stud accommodates two eyelets, but since we have such a thick assembly for the closure flap there, this double stud just will allow us to twist the portion of the twist lock fastener over the eyelet easily. You can use the standard height stud as well, but you'll find it a little bit more difficult to twist the top. When using a twist lock fastener and going through either a location with two eyelets or a location with a multiple thick assembly, it's not a bad idea to okay. use the double height two screw stud. At all other locations, we're going to use a standard height stud and also the standard okay. eyelet. It's only at these thick locations that we need this. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and do the rest of them. We're not going to walk you through installing the rest of the twist lock fasteners. It's done the exact same way that we just showed previously. Here it is complete. Open up the flap and you have access to the slit. And then just close the flap and twist the fasteners. Here are the two sides before they are sewn together. You'd want to install the slits after you have the bottom hem 
for the entire sail cover complete and then you want to start installing the Lazy Jack slits. You'll notice that this slit is a little bit longer than the 20 inches so we installed four twist lock fasteners at that location. And here's what the backside or the inside of the cover looks like. We will not show the rest of the process of sewing the entire sail cover together but here it is all complete to give you a preview of that and you can see the twist lock fasteners at the bottom of the sail cover leading up to the, each one of the lazy jack slits. This is a throated sail cover and that's how easy it is to install a lazy jack slit in a sail cover. I'm Mayor Grant with Sailrite. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to order all your supplies from Sailrite.